Hello everybody and welcome to Digital Illustration, the Character Design Masterclass. So this is week one and we will be looking at conceptualization of a character. My name is Tom Sternad and thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm the uh, lead digital artist of the Creator Space and wanted to start off by uh, thanking all of our uh, partners uh, in making this uh, project happen. So uh, we have the Canada Council for the Arts, we have our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. And uh, as always, we're really excited to um, you know, be able to uh, you know, share this with all our library partners and want to remind everyone that you can access this um, uh, program again via this uh, link in Vimeo and the software we're using and some of the computers and things don't forget that you can access our uh, digital arts computers and systems uh, um, at the library partners too so they, they'll be uh, reopening again soon and then there's uh, we have our digital arts computers there but the whole time now uh, even uh, during any kind of lockdowns or shutdowns you can access digital arts uh, cameras take them out just like you can a book and uh, you can, I'll put my email address up if you have any questions about that, please reach out and uh, we'd love for you to um, access some of the equipment and maybe get creative while you're uh, maybe, you know, during a stay at home now. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, today's session, uh, it's uh, continuing on our digital drawing with Jeff Wilson. Uh, Jeff's a, a local animator, illustrator, cartoonist, and uh, we're really happy to have him here with us. The software we're using and featuring is the Procreate software, low cost app for iPads, iPhones. And uh, the best part about these uh, master classes now is we're going to get in a little more in depth and start to talk a bit about uh, some of the theory and, uh, you know, kind of some of the concepts and things uh, um, in terms of, um, you know, what, uh, you know, how, how, they, uh, how they work and, um, you know, and trying to figure out, uh, um, you know, what, what, what all these things mean and how can we use them and, and, and make it all work. So... Yeah, so really, really excited for that. So I'm just gonna, let me just switch this over to Jeff here. And it's gonna make this full screen. There we go. Lots of technology happening all at once. So yeah, okay, so without any further ado, uh, here is uh, Jeff Wilson. Thank you so much, Tom, and welcome everyone. Today, uh, we're going to be doing uh, something that's a lot of fun for me, and it's a scary thing too. If you're uh, if you're you know faced with having to come up with a character, but it's it's something that can be um, it can be a great deal of fun too. And, and I know you'll have a great time doing this. Um, it's uh, characters are uh, I've been told anyway that characters are one of my uh, the things that I do do well, and and it's something that it, it um, you can start really uh, really simple, and and simple is best. That I always felt that uh, simple is best. But uh, um, you are really kind of faced with uh, with a lot of concepts that can be very um, very uh, very convoluted and can be really difficult at times. So I think the more you strive to keep it simple. And keep uh, what you're doing simple, uh, even if it's a if it's a very difficult uh, subject you're you're tackling. Um, especially the imaging, uh, it, it can be. I think it's a, a much better uh, way to do it. And I think your readers or your viewers will probably agree with you too. Um, and uh, always trust. I always say to trust your instincts as an artist and as a you know if you're you're an artist uh, of comics, uh, you're probably also a consumer of comics. So, you know, you trust your um, instincts as a consumer of what you, uh, of what you're involved in as well. Um, now I'm going to just start with a couple of, uh, a couple of the, um, the tenets of, of creating a character. And it's basically, you have to have that inkling of an idea um, to start with. Um, and you, um, and it's it's usually it's as simple as that. You just have an idea. I'd like to do a uh, a character to be the star of my comic strip or my my comic book. And uh, so it, it's really quite simple. Uh, the inkling of the idea. Of what are you trying to do? And um, so you you probably probably do have an idea of some kind, and you you want to pursue that. So the 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 next thing is, does it interest me? And uh, if it interests me, then um, it, chances are it'll interest others. And a lot of people start by trying to, um, and I, you know, in my career, I've made the same mistake, try to do something that uh, others uh, 
will like and, and forget that, that that I'm the, the creator and that it, there has to be a personal connection to it. So you have to um, take that into mind too. What is, uh, how does it interest me? And if it doesn't, then maybe that's the, that's uh, a decision that, that you should make is just to move on to something else. Um, can I come up with ideas day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year? Uh, that's a very real thing to consider too at this point, because uh, um, you're, you're creating something that, uh, you know, wh wh where does this character fit in? Like you may, may be just a, a one-time character that shows up in your strip or in your in your comic panel and that's fine too and you know so it, it will uh be a consideration in, in how you design the character uh so uh and then the reference if needed um do you need a reference for um if it's something you're not familiar with um uh like um if you're doing a the idea is based in New York City, and you don't know anything about New York City. You need to do some study, study some of the architecture and and uh, some of the history. That's always important too. To doing reference and research as necessary, as needed. And uh, you know, if it's fantasy land, you know, some fantasy land that you're creating yourself, that that's not really necessary to to do any reference on that, except. Um, you know, except where something would apply, like if it's uh, close to um, some existing place. That's always good to research that and and to uh, and to make sure you, uh, as you want it to resemble that, you uh, need to do reference on the real life thing. And then you just get get out your sketch pad and doodle and sketch and um, no no focus, uh, some focus, all the focus, no pressure. Basically, you're you're dreaming, you're exploring, uh, uh, and do gesture sketches. And we're going to do a little bit today, um, some gesture poses, and um, sh show you how that uh, it, it's not it's it's not rocket science. On the other hand, but it is it does it does a process that can be a long process, but I believe it can be a fun process. And and again, I think we explored this um, in one of the previous sessions. Um, Again, there's no rules uh, in how you're doing it. There's light is dark, dark is light, etc. You're, um, and once you find something, you're ready to refine it. So we're, what we're going to do is um, explore um, a character I, I chose the other day, and that is a uh, praying mantis, which is a very difficult, um, very difficult insect to draw. But I, they're fascinating. They're a fascinating insect. And so that's the type of character I'm going to attempt to draw today. So I'm going to switch uh, my camera here to my uh, drawing screen, and I'm going to just uh, call up a bit of uh, reference here. So the praying mantis, I got some reference photos here on uh, just Google. And this is, I'm not going to trace this or do anything. I'm just going to study the figure here. Um, the praying mantis is a really strange insect of, of the insect kingdom it's probably the big one of the biggest ones that we have here in canada and they are very um unusual in that <clears throat> um that they can be kept as even as pets i re remember when i was a boy i <clears throat> we had one fly into our house in the farm and it stayed <laughs> it stayed it had a little spot on in the house uh, like a stick and a, a little water area where it would wash uh, what it would catch flies in the air and wash it in the water which was really amazing and then it would eat it with the, the, the praying mantis claws it was a really interesting creature and they they are basically tame they don't seem to be afraid of human beings uh, per se so uh, the really interesting part is their their head and the bulbous eyes are just uh, and their antenna <laughs> and and they're they're like a walking stick. I guess that's a, a term for this animal in, in some cultures, a walking stick. So so that uh, gives you a basis for the, the praying mantis. So I'll just uh, take that picture out here. There's a close-up of its face. Kind of a gross-looking face, but um, and that's what makes it a challenge. If you're trying to make a character of a, of a feature, um, to make that a little more attractive or a little less... Uh, ugly there so it, it helps to have a bit of reference to refer to anyway and we're just going to uh, just going to explore that a bit so um just going to get out my sketching pencil here and we're just going to do a few little gesture poses here of a 
of a praying mantis. Let's go back to this. Uh, let's see, this is the one we want here, isn't it? Hmm. Let's create a new one. <laughs> let's create a new layer. So we'll just uh, do some gesture poses. So when you're doing gesture sketches, you're basically finding the basic shape here. Let's just uh, increase that drawing tool. Just I want to give it a little more, a little less uh, tooth here. Get a little straighter here. So that sh shape of the head, that's very interesting, the triangular shape. So, so I'm just going to do a couple little sketches here of, uh, of our praying mantis and the, and the claw here. Again, it, it's just uh, just doodling here, basically, just finding the finding the things about the character that make it unique. And and try to, you know, have fun with it. Try to create a some kind of thing, but I'm just trying to make him do like a soft shoe dance here with those bizarre shapes. Maybe with a top hat. See, I'm just going to reduce this a bit here so we have a bit more acting space here. So we'll... Uh... <laughs> Put a little top hat on him here. And a cane. And uh, just kind of flesh it out a bit here. This is a more of a cartoony take, I guess, on our on our character. And we're just going to use the red pencil here to kind of close in a bit on some of these, uh, just to tighten it up a bit. Just Cl uh, clarify some of the, the shapes here. And that, uh, something when you're designing characters, you have to remember that um, um, it's always pleasing to the eye to have uh, symmetry too. And, and, and even if it's, um, you know, close to symmetry, it isn't always perfect symmetry, but uh, if you have uh, something close, it's, uh, it's attractive to the viewer. I'll just increase that a bit, tooth of the, of the line. And we'll try to get those eyes symmetry, you know, symmetrical. Get that top hat and those antennas. And the very interesting thorax on the on the praying mantis. I'm, we're going to make it. Like it is on the, the actual body, very small. Um, the thorax is where all the legs are on the on the creature too. So, and and like Disney, I am going to like Disney did with uh, Jiminy Cricket. I'm going to only give him two bottom appendages here. That was a very clever thing that Disney did to make Jiminy Cricket a very um, appealing character to. Because an insect with uh, with six appendages can be. It, it, you know, it's a it's a creative decision. If you can put in those four appendages, if you have some idea on how they're they're going to work, by all means, go for it. But um, I thought that worked very well, and and uh, it's you know I think in Jiminy Cricket, to many of us, has endeared himself very very much uh, because he's uh, quite almost almost. Um, we can almost relate to him as human beings uh, to a character like that. So we've got uh, his his claw here wrapping around the his uh, cane. And he, his, uh, 
his abdomen here at the bottom with the wings and the <laughs> beautiful wings and whatnot and the, and the scales in the on the abdomen underneath here and we got a little dancing scene with a with a praying mantis so so there we've kind of got the basis for a character already so let, let's just do let's just delete that one a bit or kind of explore it a bit more just do a little more uh exploration of this what this character looks like and put them in a couple of contexts here So already you can you, you can see I'm loosening up. I'm kind of finding how I want this character to look. I'm just going to change colors of the pencil too, and just kind of tighten it up here. I'm going to go from red to blue this time, and I'm going to zoom in and just kind of um, give a little more detail to the face. I am going to just increase that thickness though. Yeah, I think once I find when I'm designing characters, once I have the face, once I have the face I want on the character that I'm trying to create, I know that I'm I'm almost there. Once I, I find the facial look and uh, the and the eyes especially, it goes comes down to what the eyes look like. If you have get the eyes down you pretty much have it in place so um so i i kind of like the the mouth going off to the side here <laughs> uh because the yeah the very distinct look of the the praying mantis face here the the triangular head actually to, in general it looks pretty good so we're going to give our praying mass the two legs again very thin skinny legs here we'll and notice how i've got them standing here and i if we go back to our lesson about um about balance I'm just going to do a very light line here showing the balance straight perpendicular line here and then imagine the um sorry i'll, I'll just roughly draw in a horizon and you can see that he's balanced you know he's keeping his uh his body is balanced here and of course he's got this big abdomen here at the back which is <laughs> interesting to draw to anyway it's uh so it's coming so there you go and i and i think i would um do um do a few more sketches like that and I, I'd have a kind of a basic look for the character and then later on we'd figure out uh, what the volumes are like the width of the arms how wide the arms should be you know what what height, depth and height the the chest and the, the, the uh, thorax would be here I think I'd my preference at this point is to keep him very slim and kind of uh, because that, you know, a walking stick is uh, very much a trim figure. And then this big, <laughs> this big abdomen here at the bottom, it's really kind of a, a funny thing. You can just add, add to every scene if you like. And uh, <laughs> I can see lots of jokes coming up about it too. So it would be a good humor character. I, I don't know how popular this would be, but, you know, it's it's quite a challenge to come up with something that's uh, interesting to look at, and uh, so let's let's uh, leave that for now. Let's imagine uh, we are going to create a a superhero, the praying mantis, because a lot of you will um, will enjoy enjoy having a character like that. So let's go back and refer to our praying mantis head. 
and then the praying mantis body here. So we got a certain body shape here. The um, the long uh, sinewy limbs and the the big abdomen at the back, which uh, for a superhero maybe you'd choose to drop that out. I don't know. It it might be an interesting thing to add add to the character. Um, let's let's explore. Let's do a couple of gesture sketches of a of a superhero that we can modify to a. Um, so the superhero shapes, you've got your your oval for the head, the um, kind of the upside down triangle for the chest and, and stomach, and then your uh, box for the, the hips and um, groin area, and a couple of uh, bubbles for the, the thigh and the, um, and the leg. Or sorry, the bottom leg, the lower half of the leg. Some bubbles for the shoulders, and then of course tubes for the arms, and and circles for the fists and hands, or whatever you want to call them. I'm going to kind of have a superhero in a in a kind of a defensive fighting pose here. For those of you who are wrestling fans, that's kind of when you're drawing superheroes i think the they must have studied wrestling posters because that's uh it always reminds me of uh the old wrestling posters the way they they pose themselves kind of like i'm ready to to take on somebody so that's uh that's our start so we have our reference here to the praying mantis how do we how do we get the uh connection here so we uh is it a and also the other thing is is this going to be a villain or a superhero this could be a bad guy this could be your your enemy for your your main superhero the rough man or whoever whoever you want to do um just to see if i can adjust this a little bit here so it's a little more sturdy and so we're going to just take increase this uh the uh loose of uh, the pencil here and i just want to get a little more definition in the in the physique here a bit to get uh, get going okay so let's uh, take a look at the head how can we make this a hero I, th I think we can do it very very easily here I'm just gonna increase the uh, maybe put some red in here and maybe just tighten that up a bit so we've remember for our faces for superheroes we're divided into the quadrants uh, the, the center of the face and the the shape of the face is usually the eye, eye line is right up close to center sometimes just a bit above center here so we'll we'll try to re recreate that that uh, praying mantis eye here in this area here and try to keep it still try to keep it human looking and uh And we'll try to keep the sharpness of the jaw somewhat as well. There we go. It's it's again, as I said, the if, if I've captured the head, if I've captured the eyes and the head, I feel like I'm well on the way to creating the character the that I want to create here. Let's see here. It, it, this could be a helmet he's wearing. This uh, this character, and he could be very sinewy, small character. I've kind of developed him kind of muscular, but I I don't need to. I'm just gonna crease that red a little bit in the darkness side here. Just gonna crease the darkness. Go into our color here, and I'm just gonna just increase that red, just to give it a little more strength. Yeah, so this could be a helmet that our praying mad superhero is wearing, and we could have uh, antennas here. Right here, but he wouldn't have to have that. Uh, he have the broad shoulders, but he wouldn't have to have that brawny look. He, we could give him a little more 
I guess the, a good character to compare it to would be Spider-Man. He's very insect-like and not as uh, brawny as a lot of the other superheroes of his ilk. So we're just going to maybe keep the broadness of the shoulders, but maybe not make the arms quite so muscular. Take that uh, down a bit, tone that down a bit, and give him, him or her, we could uh, create a, a female out of this as well. It could be a female character. In fact, uh, the praying mantises, uh, females are the ones that, uh, that um, you know, they eat the male after they, <laughs> they've had the babies. And, and uh, so you, you could make it a female too, and we'll, we'll take a shot at that maybe too. But uh, for now, we're just kind of exploring. Well, let's see how this uh, this character would look. Of course, the triangles for the, the feet. And uh, just some almost triangles for the ha the hands and we'll make them into fists here. I, I think that always makes it look fun when you've got a, a fist here. And you can give them something here for the, the costume. <laughs> and again, as I say, we can modify this to be a... Uh, a female character too. We can give give uh, got the slim waist there, so we could certainly modify that to have a more femininely feminine shape here. Just kind of take down the broadness of the um, shoulders, maybe, and but we can see keep most of the. Uh, most of the dimensions the same. Just kind of taper off some of the, and round them out for a female character. And uh, maybe a little wider in the hips here, I think. And we'll just uh, modify the face a bit as well. I don't like that mouth very much. I'm going to try that again. I think it's the nose. I think it's the nose that's, that's bothering me here. I'll just uh, put some fuller lips here and maybe make a tiny nose here. That, that seems to work for the female version. And uh, there you go. You've got uh, your female version of the same character. And you can, you know, put them in different poses and... Uh, Try it again. Of course, you work with the uh, symmetry of the character too. That's something you you can do now and, and just kind of get your gesture sketch to have a certain look. And um, there you go. It's uh, could be a praying mantis, or and you can put the eyes in here too if you want to. <laughs> kind of um, boy, if you saw a superhero like this, you'd kind of back off, but. You know, try to think about what your character would uh, you probably already actually have thought about what uh, your character does what their uh, powers are what their what their goals are what their aims are as as they go through their uh, their adventures and you can just uh, keep playing with that or it and what you can do too is just change things you can uh, you can take this character. Let's just erase some some of the elements here. Again, it's black as dark as uh, light, and light as dark. You're not. You're you're exploring things that have never been explored before. So don't, you know, you may not. You might say that, boy, that doesn't really do anything for me. I'd rather do something a little more dramatic. So you might just. Um, 
take that head entirely and, and just totally do something different here. And we, of course, we know the, the praying mantis head is kind of a triangle so from what we've seen. So you might just say, well, I want to do something a little more like a praying mantis for the head. And maybe I want to make the body a little more sinewy and less muscular. So you might just take down the, take it really thin, maybe no muscle at all, maybe just uh, almost skeletal, maybe no, uh, not so opulent in, in some areas of the body here and just kind of take it right down to almost a skeletal scale and that's and that's certainly uh an option too it, it, it's really great to play with these things at this point here i'm going to uh, give them a very thin neck we're going to make those eyes a little more opulent here Take those arms down again. Let's just get that eraser tool and take these arms back down. Yeah, this is really an interesting look here that we're getting from this as well. Like it uh, kind of gives it a more of an insect feel. So, uh, so very exciting to do this. And, and you can do that, of course, with the legs as well. Or you, you may decide to leave it that way, but I, I personally don't like it. And I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to take those legs down a bit here, make them a little more stick-like, and um, take those legs as well, or the calves, bottom parts of the legs. And there's not too much flesh on the foot bone uh, per se, or there should, uh, you know, normally isn't. So we're going to uh, just kind of try to. Again, try to keep the um, the volumes of the of the limbs consistent as well. So I've got some problems in here, so we're going to have to do something about that. Maybe just make them a little wider at the top here, where the the hip joint is, and then okay, and then the less strenuous calves there. And we've got, it gives us a whole new look here. Like uh, the thing that bother, bothers me about this character are these antennas. I just don't like them. <laughs> and it's it's all the whole process of what do I like, what don't I like, and what, what can I do to improve it? What can I do to change it to what I do like? And uh, you may find that you, you'd prefer to have his, uh, his or her antennas here. Uh, or, you know, it may be um, an androgynous uh, character, too. They may not. Um, I, I put pants on them because I, um, doing comics, you have to remember that, um, you know, that there was a comics code authority that said that, you know, if you don't have the Silver Surfer didn't have pants on, <laughs> he would be completely naked. But, of course, he had no, nothing to... Uh, yeah, I, I think that was a pretty famous one, was the Silver Surfer having to have those silver pants on. <laughs> so I, I'm going to put the pants on. I don't want to offend anybody out there. Uh, so I'll just put these pants on. And the eyes, yeah, I'm just really liking what I can do with these eyes. It's something to explore, too. And uh, so I'm just going to go back to a few other sketches I made here earlier. Um, that was the one we just did, the cartoony type character and the dancing. And uh, these are some gestures I did earlier today just to try to find, uh, play with the shape, explore it. And uh, let's go to another one here. Yeah, and then this one on the right here was a superhero I tried to create and uh, it could, I could, just do a little bit of modification on that because I really thought that was it was going somewhere here. It, uh, let's take that uh, to 
where it was here. This is the one here. So I'm just going to use a darker pen and just kind of build on this a bit because I, again, what you'll find is you'll fill the sketchbook, but then you'll probably find a couple of sketches in your book that you'll want to build on and to explore the character a bit more. And again, as I said, the, when you find the the face and the head and the eyes, that's that's when I find that the character starts to come together, and you can do some some great acting in the in the comic or the whatever your project is. Uh, you can get that visual thing going, and just take a bit of time and and. Uh, See, I think he had his arms crossed here with his little claws. <laughs> and of course, the same here with that claw. And again, you're just sketching, you're exploring, you're, uh, you're finding the, the character. As you're doing this, you're kind of saying, well, what could he do? What could he or she do? Or they, could they fly to uh, to save their the people that are needing to help from them um, would they have a secret identity would they have a um, another identity that they would use and, and what would be best for them to a praying mantis uh, character what would be would it be an entomologist or um, you know somebody that studies insects or bugs and, and, and you know what would be their their alter ego if they had one and uh, all these things can come up as you're as you're coming up with the sketches this i really like this pose because the he or she looks like they're kind of an introspection like you know what what do i do with myself in my uh, in the future here this one here was uh <laughs> i was exploring a kind of a bad guy here too but not quite as pleased as i was with this one here this really seemed to hit home and and of course, when you're creating a character, that's something that should always be important to you is the, um, they will be strong and powerful, maybe, but maybe they won't. Maybe they'll be very vulnerable and very, and very thoughtful. <laughs> and that can be, uh, that can be a very attractive to a reader. You know, if, they, if a reader can, something a reader can attune to uh, for themselves is always a good thing to, uh, is always a good thing to keep in mind when you're designing characters. So yeah, that's what you'll find. You'll uh, keep your sketchbooks. Uh, you'll find the ones that you like. This was a, a gag cartoon I did with a couple praying mantises in a in a bar. And um, you know, this if you've ever learned about praying mantises, how the female uh, and the male uh, mate, and then after they do, the female kills the male and eats them. <laughs> I think is what we learned in biology. So the, you could see uh, something like that being a, a real interesting thing for a praying mantis to go to a bar and tell the bartender. So I thought that might be a might be a fun gag cartoon. But again, you've got kind of built the uh, I built these characters to be very um, very loose and very cartoony, and I can certainly certainly tighten up this quite a bit. And uh, in fact, it's probably close enough to, let's see, I could even probably uh, take that to, to a final cartoon. If we had time, we could probably tighten up the drawings and come up with a gag for that. I'm sure I'm sure you've probably come up with one before I have on this gag with the praying mantis uh, talking to her bartender, like about how she just uh, was uh, driven by instinct to eat her husband after they, <laughs> they uh, made it. And the bartender very patiently listening. So, uh, always a good um, a good thing to come up with the little uh, situations. As if you're doing gag cartoons, uh, the the person in the bar or the insect in the bar that's uh, something that is pretty common. Um, you you put them in a situation where um, they will open up, and uh, in gag cartoons. And in superhero cartoons, it's basically the same thing. You're, you have to remember that we are 
you know, I, I know the world doesn't want us to have uh, stereotypes and, and things that, um, that are, <laughs> that are predictable or, or things that you, it, it, but cartoons that have really made, that's what cartoons are made of. Basically the, the stereotype, the, the, the familiar situation that you can put an unfamiliar figure in. Um, it, it really is the calling card for, for cartoons and the, the rest of the world doesn't want to do that. Maybe that's why cartoons are less popular now, but uh, it really, uh, the, the, the bar it's, it's, uh, there's so many applications for it in gag cartoons. And, uh, so I, I'll just kind of go through the, the process again. Uh, at the start, we just kind of studied some um, some characters, or sorry, I get these are basically reference material. We're not using this to draw from. We're just using it to kind of refer to, like uh, the basic look and the the feel of the of the praying mantis, and of course the the close up of the face. And as I said, the face is uh, um, it may be very repulsive on the praying mantis close up, but um, if you you can maybe see some some of the things that we found uh, in the face to explore characters with, and then of course we had our our, our gesture sketches with the the praying mantis character and just having fun with the the shape and the and, and humanizing it by taking a set of legs away to make it a little more something that we can identify with as uh, as we try to make it a cartoon character, and uh, then we took it to another level we took it to the superhero level where we uh oh sorry that's not it there um yeah we had our our sort of our super figure here too and and uh, we had a couple of different variations of that and and ended up here and this could be a villain or a, a good guy and you could add to this costume in, in whatever way you want uh, it's uh, it's certainly uh not something you have to um yeah, don't let anything hold you back. You can add things like that, like a, a shoulder piece here that goes across, <laughs> make them look villainous. And uh, and you can do that with your boots too. Give them, give them a pair of kind of funny boots as well. And if you even wanted to, if, if they were that much of a villain, you could even add a, an abdomen at the back of the, of the ca character too. <laughs> Again, don't try it. Try it. If you don't like it, you can erase it or just throw it out and do a new one. Again, uh, there's no there's no end to it. And then once you found something that you were um, that you're happy with, let's let's go back to this one here, this figure here. I th think that was something that felt there were some possibilities for because um, I, I found a good pose for it, and it was uh, yeah, and, and it's something that I, you know even now I want to play with it a bit more just to give it a little more strength and yeah even and that's what you'll find with the ones that resonate with you you will begin to play with the sketching more and you'll you'll flesh them out and it'll become a little more um real to you so um i think that's pretty much all i can tell you today uh, we'll next time we'll or one of the future times we'll get into um to purifying our our idea and um and making it a little um you know once you you're on your way you can begin to write the stories for it and, and the stories will probably even write themselves and uh and just en enjoy the process and it is a, a long process um and, and you it's an ongoing process you will find that you like certain things and certain things you won't like and uh, you'll just uh, exclude them or they'll they'll just go by the wayside even unintentionally so um it's it's an ongoing process never-ending process and uh, enjoy uh, and hope uh, hope i helped you today and uh, have fun thanks jeff yeah that was fantastic um i'm just uh, gonna open it up if there, anybody has any q a um and I wanted to just ask Jeff, so um, uh, for this, the first week, uh, um, I, I wanted to mention to everyone too, so I've posted his email here, um, so you can uh, email Jeff uh, directly, 
So if you're, you know, starting to explore your character design and conceptualizing a character and, you know, you want to maybe, you know, show Jeff some of your concepts and ideas, get some feedback, uh, that's part of this uh, multi-week course setting now. So, you know, and, and essentially, you know, follow along and, um, and uh, you know, by the end of this, you'll have a, a character uh, you know, working through Jeff in, in, the, in these weekly sessions. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that Jeff uh, is uh, available. You can do emails. You can email myself, too, if there's any equipment uh, questions you have about taking stuff out. Um, but, yeah, definitely please uh, use the, the, those resources and uh, run, run some of these ideas uh, by Jeff. I know we're limited in our time on these uh, sessions, but uh, this way, you know, you might start working on something and you might want to come back to it and say, hey, Jeff, what do you think of this, right? And then uh, you can run some stuff by him. So I think, you know, that'll be really fun. And that's, that's part of what we're doing now with these master classes. So uh, definitely, uh, we hope that we'll get some of that participation and we'd love to see what you're doing. Um, had a question, Jeff, um, just in terms of um, the character stuff. Uh, uh, the, uh, from from the, the concept, it seems like um, you, can, you can take things and it kind of morphs into different things. So... Uh, could you just speak a bit about, um, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, what would you do if there were a couple uh, reference points? So let's say you took like, you know, uh, the, the praying mantis and then you took like a, a motorcycle, you know, and you're like, okay, the, that's what you want to do. Like, can, can we just talk a bit about the joining? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Well, yeah. So if you wanted to do um, like a... Um... No, that there's all kinds of directions you could even take that. You could be a, you could want a praying mantis that rode a motorcycle, and or you could want to maybe do a motorcycle that was a praying mantis. Uh, that, that would be the that would be the character. It would be like a mechanical character. So, so that would be uh, yeah. There's no as I say, no end. There's no end of ideas that you could have. Explore those, um, and you may say, well, that's what I want. I want it to be um, a praying mantis that is a motorcycle. And uh, just keep exploring that. If you find that, that you're, you know, in your dreaming and your the dreaming process or the, the uh, f I call it the finding process, but it, it really is just basically brainstorming and, and sketching at the same time. So as you're doing that and you're thinking about that, um, you try to explore, explore that and do a few thumbnail sketches as I did, uh, like the, the, uh, I guess the, what would I call them? The gesture sketches, the, uh, do a few of those and just do them over and over again. Fill, fill a few pages in a, in your sketchbook of that in it. And, um, slowly, but surely it, it, it comes out that what, uh, you know, what you're, what you're trying to find, or even if it doesn't come out, what you're trying to find, something better will come, come about and you'll go with that. So it's, it, it is very strange process because you don't go into it thinking, well, I'm going to do this. Well, some people do, and, and I'm, and I'm not going to say you don't do that, but I'm saying my, my feeling is that, uh, I go into it totally open and I have things revealed to me as I do it. So, um, uh, that's what I've found, but, um, th that's my advice as to, um, if you know, that's what you want, uh, sit down and, and uh, do gesture sketches, put them in situations, even put them in poses that they might be in, in, in your adventures that you could see and um, explore it. And uh, you'll be surprised what you come up with. Yeah, that's perfect. Thanks, Jeff. Um, just a, another question coming in here. Uh, in terms of, uh, do, you, do you ever take multiple areas or multiple parts of, of something, like different reference points? Because you showed us like the Prey Mantis, the real close-up of the face. Um, would, would you, do you ever sometimes take multiple reference points? So like a Prey Mantis and then some other references to create different elements. So like you love the eyes of a Prey Mantis, but you love the hands of a, um, um, of a gorilla, you know, and then you, you bring all these different elements. Uh, can you, can you speak to that? You could, yeah, that would be quite a, that would be quite a combination. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you certainly, you certainly would do that. Uh, for sure. That's, um, that would be quite a character actually to study the hands of a gorilla or the, the you know, the, the, the body structure of a, of a gorilla and put a head of a praying mantis on it. That would be, uh, again, that's the process is, uh, you know, if, if that's what you see in your mind's eye, uh, try to put it on down on paper and, and, uh, 
it, it may it may work, <laughs> or or you may say, well, it's better to have an elephant's tusk on the praying mantis, and and a, um, and maybe the gorilla's hands could be a, pra- a raccoon's hands. <laughs> Uh, you may find that's that works better, but again, just uh, that's the process. Is uh, you, w- there's nothing written in stone when you start. You just uh, you, s- you say, well, what would happen if I did this, and and uh, what do I like in in what I've done in these sketches, and and what I I never throw my sketchbooks out. I always go back and I I always I'm always modifying things. And it's uh, it's can be frustrating, and <laughs> but. Um, I think that's the that's the charm or the charm of it, and that's really the success that you can have is by going back and saying, "Yeah, I could just tweak this a little bit, make it a little better," and um, and I think that's where you uh, you find the most success. So yeah, don't you know if you really want to have your your praying mantis with gorilla hands, you may find that that's exactly what's going to work. But uh, you know, don't rule anything else out and, until. Uh, you know, until you've tried it, try a few things and uh, and see what you end up with. And it may not be at all where you wanted to, wanted to at the start. Perfect. Thanks, Perfect. Thanks Joe. Uh, just uh, another just question, another question. Uh, Do you have, have you ever had any uh, unlikely inspirations, you know, like uh, coming up with a character from something that you never thought would really happen? So just getting inspired by un- unlikely sources. Yeah. Well, um, I've had... Uh, I tell you, when when you do comics, you uh, you it's it's always good to have characters play against the, your main characters that that are different and that are uh, you know even opposite. And it's it's the same in in theater and and in film and and uh, every other form of entertainment. Is the characters you have the the less alike they are, the more entertaining it can be. So yeah, th- th- there are a lot of characters I've done that. Um, that I never would have thought that I would have done, but uh, situations in in the in my writing of the comics have, uh, have they've emerged from them, and, um, it, and and they're a lot of fun. If you do a character that's opposite to what uh, what you're comfortable with doing, um, they're they make for very entertaining material. So, um, and yeah, I've I've done, you know, it, it, it you always have to remember it has to. St- to be believable in the context of your story. The story is always number one, but um, to have a, a far, you know, a, a character that's a little out there and, and silly and uh, goofy. And yeah, I, I've come up with characters that I never would have dreamed uh, would have fit, but they, they, and they work really well. So that happens all the time. Uh, and that usually for me, anyway, it's been in the writing process. That's been, um, I think of a, of a, you know, maybe a, a five or six comic strips that would be in a series and and a character would would be involved that uh, um that would be a total totally opposite to what i uh, what, what i normally have in the strips so so yeah that's uh that's great that's a that's a real find when that happens and it can, and it will happen too if you if you keep writing and drawing perfect yeah no that's fantastic jeff thank thanks so much um, I want to thank everyone for, uh, for joining us. Uh, and uh, uh, like I said before here, um, I have the information. So if you want to, uh, here's Jeff's uh, email. So Jeff Wilson mentorship at gmail.com. And you can uh, feel free to share your, uh, um, you know, concepts uh, of characters with him as we start on this uh, multi-week journey of, uh, of creating a, a character. And um, yeah, I want to just thank all of our uh, partners in this uh, project again. So we have the Canada Council for the Arts and our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, thank you, Jeff. And uh, we'll have, uh, you know, join us again next Saturday. If you haven't already signed up for it, uh, make sure you sign up for week two. And there's a, a separate link. So week one has its own uh, live Vimeo link and then week two will take you to the other one. But the good news is, the week one will be an archive. So if you click on that, you'll be able to use the link to watch this recorded video. So you can come back to it and go over the points and uh, you know the, the concepts, the gestures and everything that Jeff spoke about today and review it. Um, and again, if you have questions, reach out to us. We'd be happy to, to talk and, and Jeff's uh, you know, uh, happy to, uh, to take some questions and uh, uh, give you feedback with, uh, via email. So please uh, take advantage of that. Uh, and uh, we will see you next week. 
have a great uh, weekend. Take care.